Hello and welcome to another edition of What I Wish I Knew When First Starting Magic the Gathering Arena. Today we're going to talk about set rotation. What is it? How does it work? What does it mean for you as a player? Let's talk. So right now, this is what we're, we're looking on the screen here. This is actually pulled up from Magic the Gathering Arena when you first logged on after this announcement was released. You would have seen this if you missed it or, you know, just tapped through it and really didn't pay attention to it or you just want to see it again. I did take some screenshots, which is what we'll be browsing through here just to take a look at it. But right on the screen here, these eight packs represent the eight sets that are currently standard legal as of early September 2021. So we've got from left to right, th our Throne of Eldraine. And then Theros Beyond Death, Ikoria, Lair Behemoths, Corset 2021, also known as M21, Zendikar Rising, Kaldheim, Strixhaven, and finally the Dungeons and Dragons set Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. All eight of those sets are currently standard legal, meaning you could pull cards from that set, minus any that are you know banned, of course, and those cards are legal to be played in a standard deck. But as of September 16th, we will be adding in Innistrad Midnight Hunt because that will be released. So this is the upcoming re the start of the upcoming renewal. Now, instead of just adding a ninth set, it actually tops out at eight total sets in, in standard um, legality. And so when Midnight Hunt comes, rather than just adding that ninth set, we're actually going to lose some. So those first four are going to go away. We will then start at the bottom there. You can see in the, the, the glowing kind of mythic orange colors there. We start with Zendikar Rising. Kaldheim, Strixhaven, Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, and then Innistrad Midnight Hunt. Those will be the five, yes, only five sets that will be legal in standard. So this does mean a few things. I mean, we've gone from, let me go back a few pictures here. We've gone from eight total sets that are, it's a very large card pool. So there's a lot more variety, a lot of different options. Of course, there are some just archetypes that are stronger than others if you're playing standard. But now we'll be moving down to just five total sets that we can pull from so that's a big change right so it does it does affect your deck building and it affects your ability to play certain archetypes some will become weaker some will become stronger there is just a smaller card pool however we will be adding in you see those three dots on the bottom right there on that on that scale we will be adding in three more so we do we know that we have the next three sets coming out which are crimson vow um, and then we have kamigawa neon dynasty and Streets of New Capenna, which will be, I believe, the, the eight total that we'll see then at that point. Um, but regardless, we will be adding more is the main point here to standard. And we will not rotate any out until fall of 2022 when we'll, when we'll lose our older packs from there. So just to uh, give you guys a, a brief kind of a little bit more of an overview, just to, as a reminder here, they're visually reminding you, yes, these are the four that will be leaving standard legality on September 16th. So any cards from Throne of Eldraine, Theros Beyond Death, Ikoria, or Core 2021 will no longer be standard legal. However, they will be playable in the play mode, which is just kind of a sandbox mode where you can play whatever you want and just have fun. No risk, no reward, but it's just a good way to you know deck test or just play a friend for fun or whatever you'd like to do. And then Historic. So Historic is a different format on Magic the Gathering Arena. In terms of when you should play Historic versus when you should play Standard, I think in general Standard is a easier format to play for new players because naturally there is a smaller card pool. I mean, even at its its largest, we have you know these these eight right here that are um, possible possibly able to pull from, but you have more than that, well more than that, that are in the Historic card pool. So it will take you longer to get more cards it, there's there's others that have had collections longer than you if you're a newer player that probably have you know, har, you know more more powerful cards and it's just generally more difficult for you if you if you haven't been playing in that historic mode um or you know but if if you specifically enjoy that you can definitely play that way um but in my opinion i would say you should probably if you're a brand new player or relatively new i would say focus on standard for a while and build up your wild card collection before trying to switch to historic but that's just my two cents. But regardless, we're adding four more into the historic um, card pool. So that's kind of interesting. And in, in terms of a little bit of compensation, I don't know if you'd call it compensation or just kind of a cool move on Wizards' part. They do know that you will be losing some cards that maybe you've, you've even crafted or spent wild cards on or just worked hard to get over time. And they might be part of some decks that you play. And you're now going to have to replace them with either cards from you know any one of these five sets maybe from the first four that we've had maybe there's new cards that you need to acquire or 
you're going to want to be acquiring cards from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. They know that. And so as a little bit of a boost, there is a renewal egg. So this is this is a renewal season gift that you will be receiving and upon the release of Innistrad Midnight Hunt, which is really nice because it kind of gives you a little bit of a boost, a head start. You get immediately 10 individual card rewards. There's nine of them that are going to be rare, one that's a mythic rare. And uh, out of those, like four of them will be, you know, one from each set. So they give you a little bit of variety of the, the current four um, sets that are in standard. And then I think the last six are going to be all from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. So that's cool. The The five rares and the mythic rare will be from Innistrad Midnight Hunt. And then it's also going to unlock extra packs and uncommon individual card rewards, which you know could potentially be higher than the uncommon level um, on the free set mastery track. And so you normally will, will get that as you earn XP. So it definitely gets you a little bit of a, a jump start and a boost. Um, take a look at the rest of my channel if you guys would like to see my thoughts on how to you know approach the, the set mastery pass if you're a new player or a free-to-play free player. I definitely think it's worth it, and I explain why in depth in, in my other video, so keep an eye out for that. But just to kind of give us another little bit of a visual look here, this is what they have put up on Wizards' website. So it's a little bit of a handy graph to help us remember what years things came out, the 2021 standard, and then what standard 2022 starting in September 16th will look like. So the, the question marks have been filled in since they did announce that you know Kamigawa and and uh, New Capenna will be coming out. We know that that will be in those final two slots there, but otherwise, this is exactly what you'll see. So hopefully this made sense for you. Hopefully it gives you the information that you need to move forward, and you'll understand a little bit better how renewal works and what to do, how to approach it, and maybe when you think it might make sense to switch to Historic. I mean, that's going to be up to you, but I wouldn't recommend switching if you're a brand new player to Historic just yet, unless, you know, that's really your jam and you want to do it. It'll be more challenging. It'll take more time. Um, if you're free to play, it'll take a lot of time, but that's okay. Totally fine there too. So that's your choice, but have fun no matter what you do. You know, play Arena how you want to play it. Magic is a fun game, and we should all be playing it and doing the things with it that we really enjoy about it. Don't feel like you have to conform to any specific format. Um, you, you do what you want. That's that's what I would say. I want to empower you to, to have fun and play Magic how you prefer. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.